Welcome into another edition of a Cougs Corner uh, with Jason Puckett. Uh, it's brought to you by the Cougar Collective, your home base for NIL opportunities, connecting student athletes, fans, business owners. You can join uh, today, hashtag Mighty by Many, and supporting student athletes on and off the field. You can join the 1890 Club for as little as eighteen dollars and ninety cents a month. The most accessible route to supporting Cougar NIL growth. You can also make a one-time donation if you're a business. You can collaborate your brand uh, if you like beer, and who doesn't? Uh, you can drink the old Crimson Legendary Lager brewed by Pike Brewing. Sales benefit the Cougar Collective. More information at cougarcollective.org. Also, Flat Stick Pub, Cougar owned and operated. They got six amazing locations across Washington, Kirkland, Pioneer Square, South Lake Union, Spokane, Bellingham, and Redmond. They've got you covered for date night, guys night, ladies night, large group event. Great for kids and, of course, great place to watch and celebrate the Cougs. Go visit flatstickpub.com. Every week we talk to a, a player or a coach or Jake Dickert. Uh, this week on Cougs Corner, uh, it's uh, Cougars linebacker Keith Brown. Keith, how are you, sir? Good, good. How you doing? I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. Let me let me ask you. I mean, you're familiar with the Northwest, all right? From from Morgan, but uh, how was how has your time in Pullman been so far? Yeah, it's been great. It's been um, above and beyond what I've asked for. You know, I'm kind of Pullman, Pullman. You kind of get what you get with Pullman, and so far, I've really really enjoyed my time here. Um, there was a it was a great story profile written uh, by Greg Woods of the Spokesman Review, who covers uh, the Cougars, a beat reporter, just detailing your kind of your your travels around college football and Oregon, Louisville, now back at, at Washington State. I want to get into that because I think it's interesting just this this landscape that we're in in college athletics. But you've landed in Pullman, and and of your three stops. And it's obviously a school you've been familiar with because I think, as you noted in the piece, you know, Jake Dickert was recruiting you when you were coming out of high school. Why this school? Why this town? Why is it the right fit right now for Keith Brown? Yeah, you know, you kind of, you kind of, your mind kind of changes throughout your go when like, throughout your time in college. You know, at first, um, you, when you're young, your eyes are just big and you want the most flashiest, craziest thing possible. You know, and then. The landscape of college football changes in the middle of that and you know now you have nil and all this stuff and and then throughout that time i've kind of just came to the conclusion that I just the reason i came to football in the first place was just to play ball man and and i think pullman is a place that embodies that for the most part you know what i mean and just all we got all we need is kind of our thing here when it did do you remember uh first uh going on a football field when did you first fall in love with the sport i would say probably like i remember being so young when I was playing that I would get in my stance and I couldn't even hold my head up straight. So I had to turn my head <laughs> sideways. And I would say probably just that time when I, I didn't even know what position I played or, yeah. or anything like that. It was just me and my, my friends just running around. I had to be like seven or eight years old. Is that like the first time you were like playing tackle football? Did your parents yeah, let yeah, you play yeah. it? Then? Started, we, yeah. I started as young, young back in Lebanon, Oregon, man, like seven, eight years old, just, Really, just a couple hours with just our parents can take a deep breath for us just <laughs> run into each other and get tired. So you guys could work it out, and really, you know, like youth sports is almost like an extension of babysitting. I think in a way. Oh yeah, yeah. It just you know, hey, here's two hours. Sign your kids up, and they can we'll tire them out for you guys, and they'll go home and go to sleep. I, I would imagine uh, growing up there, you, you played multiple sports. Uh, if so, what did you what did you play besides football? Yeah, so I did um, football, wrestling, track, and I and I golfed as well. I was on the golf team my freshman year. Huh. Me and my me and my high school head coach kind of butted heads a little bit. So I was like, he was like, you need to run track, and I was like, you know, I'm gonna I think I'm gonna golf instead. So yeah, I did uh, football, wrestling, track, and then a little bit of golf. Well, listen, I, I'm an avid golfer. I love golf. Me what too. kind golf. of what kind of stick is Keith Brown? I'm okay. Some days I'm good. Actually, I so I golfed every day this summer. You know, we had a lot of the guys in the team golf. And, uh, you know, my first round I played, me and KT actually played, and I shot a 123. And then by the end of the summer, I was shooting like that, anywhere from 88 to 92 range. Wow. Yeah, you know, big, we, big, big change. That's a, yeah, it's a huge change. I had um, Dean Janikowski on uh, earlier this year. I mean, he's an avid golfer. He loves playing yeah. golf, and he bought a, a set of new clubs. Uh, of of the guys on the team and who you've played with, I'm assuming you've played with most of them. Who, who's who would you say is the uh, the number one seed? If you had like a Ryder Cup, who'd be the best oh. golfer on the team? So by far, it's 
Kyle Martin. He uh he shoots like scratch golf to sometimes under under par. Um Jackson Potter's really good. He's shooting that like 76, 78 range. Okay. Ryan Harris is another guy who's in that 78, 81 range. Yeah. What uh and that's a hell of a golf course, Palouse Ridge you get to play on. Oh yeah, yeah. It's a great golf course. It's um super impressive actually. How did when you were growing up in Lebanon, who how'd you get involved in golf? Was it your one of your parents? No, I mean, literally, I just was like, I just wanted to find the best way to make my my high school head coach upset, <laughs> and and I think and I and I was just kind of, and I think the best way to do that was go out there and swing the golf club around, and I yeah. actually really enjoyed my time there. Uh, growing up in, in Lebanon, Oregon, what what was that that like? I mean, kind of, kind of a smaller town. What, how did that kind of shape you as a as a kid growing up? Yeah, I mean, you know, like a lot of kids who come from like big cities and stuff like that, you know, they have a lot of things they can just go do on the weekends and in the summer. But when you grow up in, in Lebanon, like there is nothing. Like the closest city to you is Portland. That's an hour and a half, two hours away. So like summertime, we're cliff jumping, wakeboarding, wake surfing. Wintertime, we're snowboarding. Um, spring, whenever we're we're testing out the water, if it's warm enough or not. You know, you, you go up in the woods with your friends and drive trucks around like, Kind of just outdoorsy stuff. It sounds awesome, Keith. Yeah, I it mean, it, no, that it sounds great like great. Like that would be the best like place to grow up as a kid. Oh yeah, yeah. So summertimes, that I I tell people all the time, like summers growing up there were like better than going on a vacation to like Hawaii or something. Because like you wake up in the morning, you work out. By noon, you're on the boat wakeboarding. Yeah. By six p.m., you're cliff jumping then 8 9 p.m you're playing sand volleyball and then and then eating s'mores and hot dogs by fire dude come on man yeah, it's unbelievable it. you you must dream about going back to those days i know i i, I do i do I, I definitely try to at least once a year go back in the summer and have a good time um all right golf fans so lebanon is not too far away i mean it's still probably three hours or so uh from bandon dunes have you played bandon dunes yet I haven't. I haven't. But I'm always looking to play new places ever since I've gotten really into it. Okay. Yeah, that's a great. That's just uh, would just be what southwest of you of where you're at uh, there in Lebanon. Growing up there, not too far from Eugene, I, I would assume from the get-go, that's where you went out of high school, right right to the Oregon Ducks. Was, that was a dream early on. When, when did that um, When did that become a kind of a realization for you? Or when did you say, God, I'd love to play there. And they're so close. And uh, yeah. when you were a young kid, when you remember that? Yeah, so it's kind of interesting. People always ask me, you know, like, what was your dream school? You know, like, are you, were, you, were you a duck or a beaver? And honestly, like, I was, like, I was, like, such so far from, like, an like an athlete mindset growing Like, when I was young, like, I, I was literally just, like, riding my bike around town and would just go play football on, on Fridays and Saturdays. And then I would say probably in high school, that was when it started to become more real, you know, like, yeah. like um, probably, like, that freshman, sophomore year, I was start, when, when school started started talking to me, I'm like, yeah, you know, this could be a pretty cool place to go. You you had, you, you had talked about it, and I referenced it before, that, that piece in the spokesman about you had already had a connection with Jake Dickert when you ended up transferring to Louisville and then, and then coming back to Wazoo. You'd already known him because when he was the D.C. here at Wazoo, he recruited you. What, what do you remember uh, of when he came to your town or came to your high school and, and pitched you on Wazoo? Can you recall, yeah. kind of recall what that was like? Yeah, he he didn't come personally to my school, but I remember the running back coach and the linebacker coach, they came down. It was Coach Bellatoni at the time, and then I forget the running back coach's name at the time. And and you know, they 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 kind of they kind of pitched to me in high school, you know, like, "Hey, man, if you want to come play running back and linebacker, you know, you could do that." And 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 kind of just kind of just really tell me about just family and football and and kind of how how it goes here and and you know, this is a great place to focus and stuff like that. Yeah, the um, when you go to Oregon, what 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 transpired? You went, you were at Oregon. What from Oregon? I know you've gone over this before, and I, I'm not yeah. trying to bore you with the details, but I'm just curious, just because I, I'm fascinated by this day and age of college athletics. I, I really am. It's just a, it's such a new world. I'm 48. I mean, I don't remember, you know, when I was growing up, you you know, ki- guys go to school, right? They're there for four yeah. years, and then it's and then you're off to the NFL or off to uh, whatever. Yeah. There's so many more opportunities for for you guys nowadays. Opportunities to play NIL is, is obviously a part of it. You know this this segment this show is brought to you by uh, the Wazoo NIL, the Cougar Collective. 
Oregon to Louisville. Uh, what led to that decision? Yeah, I mean, once I knew I was leaving Oregon, um, my mindset was obviously in a different place than it is now, and I was kind of just, you know, once I enter the portal and you start talking to schools, a lot of that talk is about, like, money talk and how that goes and stuff like that. And and honestly, it was just like Louisville was the, was the highest bidder at the time, and that's kind of the reason why I went. Did it um... – when you went there, did it change you, like as a player? Yeah, I mean, when when you're when you're when people are talking about all this money and stuff, and they promise you all these things, you uh, like you you kind of lose that motivation, you know? Mm. Like you're not like you're not really like you're like oh you know I don't need to do this or do that. You kind of just yeah. think you can kind of graze by, and it kind of makes you complacent. How how did you how did you reconnect with that football player inside you and and, and get rid of maybe the the complacency? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's probably like it probably came down to when I lost the starting job at Louisville and 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 then probably around that week four time when I told coach I was going to redshirt and I and I was just like really I was just a, basically just a normal kid in Louisville, Kentucky. I, and I'd go to practice and then go home the rest of the day and just kind of be chilling. I just did a lot of time of just thinking and, and, and talking with my mom and, and, you know, my, my guy, Tracy Ford back here in Seattle, just kind of reminiscing on why I came to college and, and not forgetting who I am as a player either too. I think a lot of people can get, uh, they kind of forget who they, who they are as a player and, and the things that they know they're capable of when, you know, they're not playing. And, uh, I think it was just like a time for me to remember who I was as a player and what I'm capable of and, and kind of stuff like that. What was it? Was it Keith? Was it was it WSU right away? Once you went back into the portal from Louisville, was were they one of the first teams that contact you? And and then when they did, was it like ah, oh, this is a perfect marriage? I'm going to go there. Or were there other suitors at that time? Yeah, you know, there's a few schools that reached out, but I think WSU was was probably the, I think the first one actually. And and you know, I I scheduled my visit with them, and you know, I had plans to visit other schools as well. But as soon as I came here for the visit. And then, crazy enough, I see Chris Hudson here on the same, on visit with me at the same time. I'm like, well, I haven't seen you in forever, dude. Like, what's up? You know, we're teammates together. And then I was like, I had my meeting with Coach Dicker on my visit, and I said, you know what? Let's just make this official right now. I'm not really trying to go on a bunch of visits no more and and hear what other schools have to offer. Let's just get this done. What ultimately led you to the decision? What What was the defining factor for you? Just the way the coaches were, you know? Like, it's, it's the first time – since my freshman year that I felt like this coaching staff like truly cares about their players. You know, they, they have the best, like the best, uh, they want the best for their players, you know? Mm -hmm. And, and, and I think that was special for me and just a special place for me to just lock in for my last two seasons. What was there ever a time for you, maybe in the last year when you were at Oregon Louisville that you fell out of love of football and did like going to Wazoo bring that love back for the sport? Yeah. I mean, I would say definitely probably around, the middle of the season, my sophomore season is when I'm like, I don't know if I love this anymore. Just because, you know, new coach, new coaching regime comes in, new coaching staff, and, you know, a lot of big, lot of big changes. A lot of my friends who I came in with are getting kicked out, getting booted out when new coaches come in. And then, and then you know, I go to Louisville, my hope's really high, and, and, it, turns, and it doesn't turn out well for me. And, and I was like, yeah, I don't, like, you know, you start thinking about, like, okay, what is my future going to look like? Like, what do I do? And then, yeah, I say WSU definitely has been a place where, you know, that, that fire in me has, has came back alive. And Coach Dicker's done a great job of, of staying on me. You know, he coaches me hard. You know, like, he'll he'll bring me in his office and tell me exactly how it is. And if I'm not doing the right stuff, you know, he'll 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 let me know that. And I, and I appreciate that about him. Do, do, you, do you think there's a misconception about today's player? Because you just said it. Hey, Dick, Coach Dicker coaches me hard. There's this perception now of today's athlete that they don't want to be coached hard, that they don't like to be yelled at, um, that they that they cower to that, that it's 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 a different social media has changed how you talk to everyone, but how you talk to players. Yeah. Um, but 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 you you're in it. You're in the arena. Do you like I mean, it sounds like you like when someone gets on you still. Yeah, you know, I, I think like. I mean, people say it a lot, but like, you know, if your coach isn't getting on you, you know, like, you know, he might, he probably doesn't care about you. You know, yeah. if if your coach is someone who, who is coaching you hard and is willing to tell you the hard truth and, 
and and tell you if you're not doing good or if you are doing good you know i think it's because he cares about you and wants you to to be the best person you can be you know i talked i was actually talking to coach ben our strength coach yesterday and um because I, I literally just got chewed out just got chewed out by coach decker earlier that day and i mean him we're talking and i was like um i was like i was like yeah you know i was this is the first time in my life where like i was thankful for it like i was like thank you like like i want like i appreciate you chewing me out you know why why were you thankful why was that why would that moment you've had plenty of coaches that have chewed you out over the years sure right why 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 that moment why that conversation from from coach dicker was important for you yeah i think i think it was important because you know when 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 players and and people are on a trend in like a, a good trend you know whether it's on the field or off the field you know and 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 i and i think he noticed me starting to maybe get comfortable like last week and stuff like that, you know? And he was like, he kind of just told me like, don't get comfortable. Like, mm. you know, there's, there's, there's no time for that. You can only, only your sky's like, you're, you know, your the sky's the limit. Like you only can get better. There's no reason to think that just because I've been playing well or whatever, that I, I have time to slack off now. And I think that was good, a good, a good message for me to kind of refocus and, and kind of get back to my, to my roots. Keith, I, I joked with him a, a few weeks ago when he was on the show that, you know, I hadn't seen that side of him in the San Diego State game, right, where he was going after Janikowski and going after Mateer, and then he's like, uh, well, you should come to a, a practice one time. How, how, what is he like at practice? Is he that level of intense that we saw at San Diego State? Yeah, I mean, he definitely can get intense, and I think that's, that's, that's only a good thing. You know, I don't, I don't think I, everyone, you know, like, Oh, your coach is screaming and yelling and all this stuff. Like, no, that's good. Like, he cares. He wants success for this program, especially the trend that we're on right now. You know, we have a chance to do a lot of great things this year. It's only going to get more intense. You know, and I and I and I think it's good. I think it's a good thing. You know, and and yeah, he can definitely get get a little get a little intense during practice. How how do you guys when you how is it hard? I'm always wondering this because, like us in the media, we we look ahead, right? Oh God, look at there's three games to go. If they do this, they do that. They're they're playing here. We all do it, and maybe you guys do it too, and you never admit it. I don't know, but yeah. but how as a as an athlete, as this world ca- class athlete playing college, high level college football, how hard is it? to just have that single focus it literally is one game at a time and not look ahead i mean you guys know listen if you guys finish out this season you go 11 and 1 i mean things have to break your way you have a shot uh being in those college football playoffs how do you not get focused in on that though and just focus in on this week it's new mexico next week it's oregon state and then it's wyoming is it is it hard not to to look ahead I think I think it it can be, you know, like obviously it's something that's in the back of your mind, you know, you're n- you're never like not thinking about it, but I mean the only way you're going to get to that to that, you know, that reality is by going one and another every week. And I think that's something that's that's like installed in us through through the coach Dicker, through the top from top down that you know, nothing else matters than than what's going on right now, right here. And, and, you know, sometimes it's funny too. My mom will call me and she'll be like, you know, like, are you excited for the Oregon State or the Wyoming game? And, and excited for this and that. I'm like, mom, honestly, I'm only worried about like meetings tonight. I'm only worried about practice tomorrow. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, I think it's, um, the more you get that tunnel vision of looking towards the end of the year and all mm-hmm. this stuff and oh, what bowl game are we going to get and stuff like that, the, the more it, it it doesn't take away it takes away from the intensity and the focus that goes in every week because because it doesn't matter who you're playing you know like it doesn't matter who you're playing or what school is going against who if you're not if the only the team that's going to win is the one that's more focused that day yeah. so how how much um I mean you haven't been there that long I mean you're going to obviously use you know what the experiences from from the other guys that have been on the team but but how much do, do you think you guys collectively have used the whole we were cast aside. You know, we, 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 it's just us in Oregon State. We don't really have a home. Using that as, as motivation, to me, that for, for, for Coach Dicker would be like the greatest carrot to, de- to dangle for you guys because of the, it's kind of you guys against the world because the, the cast offs, no one wants you in there. Let's prove them wrong. Yeah, I think, I think that's, that's kind of big. It's kind of our, you know, we kind of have this edge on us, this kind of chip on our shoulder, like, Okay, you don't want us, but we'll come in there and beat you, you know. Yeah. 
you know, you, you don't, you don't want us to succeed. So here we'll succeed. You know, it's kind of like that, you know, that kind of like, no, I won't, I would never say we're underdogs because I, I truly think we're a very capable team, but it's kind of like looking down the street. Yeah. What do you, uh, it, it, can I just, I, I could spend another hour just talking about your upbringing in Lebanon because it just sounds so awesome. What do you, yeah. what do you, what do you miss most? Like as a kid, you're talking about riding your bike around, you're going to the, you're going to the river, you're going to the lakes, you're, you're skiing. What, what is it that you miss the most about, about growing up in Lebanon, Oregon? I would say really just the, the summer times and having no responsibilities. Like, <laughs> like, you know, like, like I just miss being able to wake up. I'll go work out. Yeah. And then literally I am just off with the wind. Like, mom, I'll see you later. Yeah. And me and my boys, you know, we'd, we'd be we, so like in kind of Lebanon. So we, we live 30 minutes away from like a lake and there's a bunch of cliff jumping and rope swings and diving boards. And, and my friend had a boat. So like throughout the day, we would just kind of hit this big circle of this loop of, you know, the, the lake, the river, the cliffs, the wakeboarding, the, the, the bridge to jump off of. And we just keep doing that and that and that over and over and over again. And it's so fun. And I think the best part about it too, is when people know me and they meet me through like in college and then, you know, we spend some time together in the summer. They're like, bro, how'd you learn to do all this stuff? And it's like, <laughs> I grew up, I just grew up doing this. Well, because it's, it's, you probably, when you went to Oregon and Louisville and they know it, it, it probably goes against the stereotype when they see you. Right. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. And then you know, like oh, a big tattooed football player, you know, yeah. and then they see me do a gainer off a rock or <laughs> go go rip the wake surf, and they're like, you know, how, like, how do you do this? I'm like, I just I do it, I do it forever. It sounds you you sound like when you grew up is very old school, like kind of like my generation growing up, where you just went out like this is pre cell phones, right? You you went outside, you told mom and dad, I'll be, you know what time you want me home? Well, like when the yeah. lights come on, eight o'clock, please be back. And then yep. you were gone. You're gone the whole day. Whole day. Whole day. We'd be, and you know, especially in Lebanon too, like it takes a village to raise some kids, man. And, <laughs> and you know, we would, we would be, we would be, you know, breakfast, breakfast at my house, lunch at my boy's house, uh -huh. dinner here, snack there, you know, at like 10 of us sleeping all over each other's houses, like on the floor, couch, didn't matter where, just kind of, you know, just being kids, having fun. You're pretty close with those guys still? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I'm a I'm a big video game player, and we play video games together every single day. Um, I'm going to one of the, one of my friends' weddings this summer, you know, and and just kind of stuff like that. We all stay super close, and and yeah. Parallels to from Lebanon, parallels uh, between Lebanon and Pullman. Oh yeah, I would say I would say I mean Pullman's even, Pullman's bigger than Lebanon. <laughs> like it, it truly is. Pullman, like there's more people there. Um, but yeah, definitely kind of the same idea. Like in the summer, you know, we're kind of just out here just figuring out, having fun, kind of doing stuff. Yeah. Uh, what's it going to take for you guys to, to finish off the season? You got, you got three more to go. What's the mindset? Yeah, I would, yeah, I would say first thing, first thing is going one and zero every week, you know, continue to stay healthy and, and, and keep wanting to get better. You know, I think sometimes when teams are having all this success and players are playing good, you, you don't think you got to get any better, but I still think our best football is ahead of us. So I say just trying to get better every week and going one and zero. Keith, this is a, a pleasure. Uh, I really enjoyed uh, catching up with you. Uh, thank you for doing it. it it's going to make me, next time I'm going to drive, I have an old 1985 uh, Westphalia van again. You know, Westy, you know, pops up, a little hippie van. Next time I okay, drive, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we like to go down in Oregon. I'm going to swing by Lebanon, Oregon. It just sounds, I, I think, my, I think my, where I want, where I want to be retired is Lebanon, Oregon. Get out of the big <laughs> city of Seattle and head to yeah. uh, Lebanon. Um, appreciate the time. Thank you for doing it. Yeah, for sure. Thank you. There he is, Keith Brown. Uh, he's our guest on Coog's Corner. Again, brought to you by uh, the Cougar Collective. Please join the 1890 Club for as little as $18.90 a month. More information, visit cougarcollective.org. Also, Flat Stick Pub, Cougar-owned and operated. They uh, try one of their six great locations across the state, Kirkland, Pioneer Square, South Lake Union, Spokane, Bellingham, and Redmond. More information, flatstickpub.com. You catch this uh, episode up on YouTube. Please subscribe there. Also, on Apple and Spotify, wherever you find your podcast, of course, up at pucksports.com.